Okay, in this video I'm going to be going over building the uh, Hexacopter, which is kind of a copy of the DJI um, Hexacopter 550. Um, but this one's from Hobby King, and it's an inexpensive kit. I'm just going to go through um, the parts you're going to need to build this Hexacopter, and um, basically quickly how to build it. Okay, so first of all, we got our Hexacopter. comes with a very quick little manual here, and it comes with the six arms. Three white and three red. Comes with some some zip ties and a little wrench for the screws. And then of course you got your little screw pack here. Put all put it all together. And this kit I'm using here is actually the one with the integrated uh, PCB board. So we're actually going to be soldering the connections to the uh, speed controllers right on the board, and then the power we're going to be hooking right onto the board. I haven't done this one before, so um, I'm going to try that to see if it's a little bit neater of a setup. So, in addition to the actual frame kit, what you're going to need is, first of all, you're going to need some speed controls. So I'm using the Turnigy Plush 30 amp speed controls. I heard a lot of really good things about these. I've never used them, but we're going to try using these. So, of course, we need six speed controls. Okay, so we have six identical speed controls. Just stock speed controls from um, Hobby King. Um, the other thing you're going to need for each speed control, I'm going to be using uh, bullet connectors connecting to my motors. So these don't come with bullet connectors. So we're going to have to attach these uh, three and a half millimeter bullet connectors um, onto each one of the um, connectors for the motor for the brushless speed controller. So you're going to need 18 of these three and a half uh, millimeter uh, connectors. For your speed controls. Of course we need some motors. We're going to need eight, uh, sorry, six, um, six motors. In this particular case I'm using the uh, 2826 uh, 1000 kV motors from uh, Hobby King. Um, I haven't used this particular motor. I've been used the 1200s quite a few times and uh, so this uh, has a little bit lower kV and we'll see how that runs uh, with this hexacopter. These are all very inexpensive motors. Um, with the speed controls and the motors, I suggest ordering at least one more than we need. So I always I ordered seven motors and seven speed controllers, just in case one shipment wasn't working right, or if uh, if one went bad. The other thing you're going to need is, um, first of all, we're going to use in this particular case I'm going to use the KK2 board, and in this case, I have already upgraded the firmware to the 1.5 firmware. And I've already connected my uh, voltage monitor um, lead uh, onto the KK2 board, which you can see in one of my other videos. Um, this is an awesome, inexpensive board, uh, 20 to 30 dollars, depending on when you buy it from Hobby King. I think it's 30 dollars right now. Um, the other thing, obviously, you'll need is a um, receiver. I'm just using my Futaba 7C transmitter and uh, my 2.4 gigahertz uh, receiver that comes with it. To connect the receiver to the board, you're going to need four of these male-to-male um, -male leads to connect your receiver um, onto the KK2 board. So you're going to need four of those. Okay, so uh, that's what you're going to need uh, to get started. And let's start working on building the hexacopter. Okay, so the first thing we have to do with our um, speed controllers is come with these, these plush speed controllers come with these bare-ended wires so um, we have to solder on these 3.5 millimeter connectors onto there so I have it kind of all set up here in my little device which is a pair of extra hands and I have the connector in here and then I have my wire all set up nice and straight and what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply solder right down this little hole and um, get it soldered nice and tight and I'll just show you how that works really quick um, I had to actually take off a little piece of the insulation to make sure that the wire fit all the way into the connector. Um, I use a magnifying glass usually when I'm doing this. And I'm just going to zoom in just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. And we're just going to take, face it so that the hole's facing up. We're going to apply a little bit of heat here to the outside of the connector. And then I'm just going to take the solder and melt the solder on the inside of the hole. I'm sure if you can see that pretty good, I'll do it from the side so you can see it better. 
on the inside of the hole here. Mm -hmm. Let's get it all nice and filled with solder. And get it nice and hot to make sure that the tendection end of the uh, connector got nice and connected. This way it's held nice and straight and you're all connected. All you have to do when you're done is to snip off a little piece of um, short tubing here. Pull off your connector here. And we're just going to slide a little piece of shrink tubing over the end of it. So at the end we should have six of our speed controllers here. And we should have all the bullet connectors attached to each one of them. So that's uh, 18 all together. We're going to put them all in uh, shrink tubing. So at the end we should have six speed controllers like this with the connectors and the shrink tubing attached. The next thing we're going to do is connect the power end of the speed controllers to the PCB board. Okay, now we've got all six of our speed controllers with our bullet connectors uh, where they attach to the um, brushless speed uh, brushless motors. We are going to now solder our speed controllers directly to the PCB, which is uh, kind of basically a power distribution built into the um, 550 um, frame. So next thing we're gonna do is solder these all on there and then move on from there. Okay, the next thing we have to do is take our speed controllers here, which now we have our power connectors and the PCB has a built-in power distribution. And we're gonna solder our power wires directly to um, the PCB. The first thing we have to do is there's just a very small section of wire that's exposed here. I need more wire than that exposed. Uh, then I'm going to want to tin the wire, so I'm just going to remove a little bit of that insulation. My cutters there, so that just to have more more connection. The next thing I have to do is I have to tin these wires with a little bit more solder on the end to make sure that they get a better connection. Let's get this out of the way for a second, so we can see this getting tinned. Take some solder here. Apply heat to our wire. Just then put the solder directly to the wire. Nice, fat, nice and tinned. Make sure the whole wire gets tinned. Lots of solder on it, get nice and hot. So the wire's tinned. Now we're going to bring our PCB back into the, into the picture here. And what we're going to do is we are going to apply um, solder onto these tabs right here as plus and minus. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to heat up the connector section really nice and hot and we're going to apply our solder. Nice big wad of solder on there both for both connections. Okay, good. Then we're going to take our tin wires that we just had here and we're going to apply these to the top here. We're going to add heat. Make sure they get nice and nice and heated on there. Lined up correctly. Let it uh, solidify. There's our positive wire. Do it again with our negative wire. And boom, done. We're going to do that uh, a few more times. Get one for each speed control attached to the PCB. And we can move on from there. Okay, next thing we have to do is we have to connect a power lead which is going to attach to our battery to power our power distribution PCB. I just attached a Dean's connector, female Dean, I'm sorry, male Dean's connector um, onto some silicone 12 gauge wire and I'm going to attach this to the uh, connection on the PCB which powers all the different uh, connectors. I'm sorry, all the different speed controllers. So again, I'm just going to take, I've already pre-tinned the ends of my um, my lead here. Now I'm just going to um, heat up the connectors and get some solder on there. Again, you just follow the plus and the minus. All right. And then 
just take our connection. Let's heat it down there. Get it nice and solid. It's important to use a nice heavy gauge wire like 12 gauge here because there can be a lot of amps for six speed controllers to power this um, helicopter. So make sure you use some nice thick gauge wire. Okay, good, and get that nice solid connection there. And there we go. Powered up. Okay, now we got our, our power lead and our RSP controllers attached. I'm not a big fan of leaving all these um, exposed connections. So I'm going to use a little bit of this uh, electric um, liquid tape and um, just kind of dab a little bit over each connection. Just kind of give it a little bit of extra protection from shorting out. I'll just stick one of these, just a little bit of these over each one of these connectors. Just to give it a little shorting protection. And just go around with the rest of those. You don't necessarily have to do that, but it's something I like to do. Okay, before we can attach our motors right here onto our arms, which um, we're going to do in here in a minute. We're going to attach those on here like that. We're going to have to put the um, propeller shaft, attach that to the motor. And I forgot to mention this earlier, it's one of the things that you need. When you order these motors from Hobby King, you have to order an accessory pack for each motor, which comes with all these pieces. It comes with this propeller shaft, the screws that attach to it. It comes with screws that attach from the bottom, even though we're going to use the screws um, that come with the frame kit instead. So. But you definitely need this piece, the propeller shaft, and the screws to attach that. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, put those on the six uh, motors right now. Okay, I'm going to start putting on the propeller shaft adapter onto the motors. And what you'll need is a two millimeter um, hex wrench. And then I like to put a little bit of um, thread locker on the screws before I put them in there. Put those in there, attach. One at a time. It's a thread locker. And you get the idea. Just go through and put three screws in each motor. Make sure they get down nice and nice and firm. If you don't get these down all the way, they're not all perfect. If you don't get them down all the way, the propeller shaft will tend to wobble later on so if you put them down really tight and snug then you're not going to have a problem with uh, the propeller shaft wobbling later on so you get them down snug at first don't tighten one down all the way yet snug, snug them down and then go back and really give them a nice tighten really nice wrist roll tight all the way down I'd like to do this now before we put the uh, motors on the arms because you can uh, just grab the motors really uh, firmly to put the propeller shafts on there. So go ahead and do that for all six motors and we'll go on to putting the motors onto the arms. Okay, at the beginning of the video I mentioned that uh, when you're ordering things, order one extra of each just in case. Well, here's a good example of just in case. Um, I have my motors here in this particular motor, the the holes the, for the screws to attach the propeller shaft um, are drilled, but not tapped. So there's no taps in those holes. So even though I have a tap to tap those, uh, I don't want to do that right now. So I'm going to use my seventh motor, which has the holes all nicely tapped here. So um, just uh, kind of go by that rule, especially. Uh, when ordering stuff from Hobby King, which is uh, it takes two to three weeks to get the stuff, order an extra. Okay, now we've got all our, our propeller shafts on our motors, but before I attach the motor onto the arm, I like to put a couple of, put at least one drop on each uh, bearing, both on the bottom bearing and on this case, on the top bearing, which is right all the way inside there like that. Put one drop in there, one drop here, just to make sure who knows how much oil 
got on those bearings when they're manufactured.